In this video I'm going to show you how to 3D model a camera which is going to look something like this in the end. Now this is the 3D model of it in Fusion. Um, however I'm also going to show you a picture of what you can achieve when you apply materials to it and create a photorealistic render. So this will be something that you also make in your time using Fusion. But to start with, um, I want to show you how to actually just open up and create a new file. So when you open up Fusion, you should see a screen that looks blank like this, with a surface on it or a grid that's on it. I've already talked to you about zooming in and out and panning from side to side. So now we're going to start drawing. Um, before we start drawing, we have to select a surface to draw on. And we are going to draw on what's called the top work plane. At the moment, however, that top work plane, we can't quite select it. It's not If I click the screen, nothing's going to happen. We need to turn on what's, over, what's called the origin, which is over here on the left. Press this light bulb and an orange uh, little diagram will appear. And what this is, is it is three surfaces that are floating in space and you're going to select one of them to draw 2D shapes on. If I revolve around here you can see these three surfaces and the angle in which they lie. This one here, which is now turned blue because I've clicked it, is the top work plane. It's like a tabletop and it is in line with the top surface of this cube. This one here is called your front work plane. And it's like a side on view. And if we wanted to draw something sideways, we could click that. It's in line with the front. And this last one here is the right work plane. And it's in line with the right hand side, which is this side here. We're going to select the top one. So click it till it goes blue. Right click it. Once you select right click, you'll be able to say or select create sketch. Now it's spun round and we're going to draw directly on this surface. You've got a green line running through here and a red line. Where those two lines cross is the centre, the middle. This is called the origin and we're always going to try and draw our sketches around this. I'm going to start off with drawing a rectangle and from the start, I want you to use as many shortcuts as possible using your keyboard. This will make drawing much faster. So the first shortcut I want you to do is press S on your keyboard. When you press S, your toolbox comes up and all your tools can be accessed from this. You just have to type in the first few letters of each tool and it will appear. If I type in R, E, C, rectangle comes up and I want you to select center point rectangle. For you you'll see this little arrow here and if you press that it will add it to your toolbox. So if you use center rectangle a lot you'll just be able to click it straight here. This is much faster than going over to this menu here and trying to find tools in here which takes a long time to search for them. Instead just press S and type in what you want to find and it will appear for you quite quickly. Once you've selected the rectangle, go back to the centre here, click it and draw a rectangle. Now if you're not careful, you'll end up at drawing lots more rectangles because you're still on the same tool. We don't want that to be the case. We want to stop drawing rectangles and just do one. So we've got to delete these now or we've got to stop the tool. So we're going to press escape on the keyboard. That's in the top left hand corner. So have a look, find the escape key and press it. And your cursor has now changed from the rectangle tool to the arrow pointing tool. And this is handy. I could start deleting these um, boxes by pressing the delete button on your keyboard it says delete on it so click a line and press delete and you'll be able to just delete whatever you wish 
And this could be quite slow if I did this one by one. So what you can also do is just draw a box around things and press delete. So on your keyboard, find the delete button and you can delete absolutely everything if you wish. Let's draw that rectangle again. So toolbox pressing S, center rectangle, and let's draw it. Now let's make it the correct size. So we're going to use another shortcut here. We're going to press D for dimension. And my cursor has changed to have a little um, arrow thing next to it, and that's my dimension tool. If I hover over this line and click it, and now place it to the side, I can type in the number that I want it to be. For us, I want it to be 120 millimeters. And to complete the dimension, press enter on your keyboard. Let's do the same for this side. Click this line, place it down. This size, I want you to make 25 millimeters and press enter. So we've drawn a rectangle, we've made it the right size. Now let's make it 3D. To make it 3D, we're going to press the Q tool. Uh, sorry, not the Q tool. We're going to press the Q key on our keyboard. So press Q. If it doesn't spin round, you can always press home and it will spin round for you. And I want you to select this rectangle so it goes blue. If you use your this arrow tool here, you can drag it to make it 3D. But we need to type in a value here of 60 millimetres. Now this is the first time we're making this, so it will say new body. And we press OK here. If I just get your attention down here, if you made a mistake when you were typing things in and it's not the right size, you can edit it. This is the extrude that you just did. This is what you did to make it 3D. You can right click it and you can select edit and it will allow you to go back and fix any mistakes you might have made. Press OK. The same goes for your sketch. You can go down here, this is the sketch now, you can right click and select edit and if you made a mistake with the size you can change it and you can do this at pretty much any point of your um, modelling process. If you realise that you've made a mistake you can always go back and fix them. Let's uh, put the lens onto this now, this will be a little bit quicker now so Let's select this surface here by clicking it. Let's right click it and select create sketch. Now we're going to draw a circle for the lens, but circle is such a commonly used tool. It's got its own keyboard shortcut. Just press C and your cursor will change to drawing a circle. Round about here, draw a circle. Press D for dimension. Click the circle, click again to drop the dimension down, and I'd like you to type in 50 millimetres and press enter. Now, you might have just sort of randomly put the circle in. It might not be quite perfect looking. So let's position the circle now so that it is nicely in the centre of this. If I'm still on my dimension tool, or you might have to press D again, click the centre of the circle and click the edge and if you've placed this correctly it will say 30. You can always change that to make it say 30 if you've not done it. So it's 30 millimeters from the top to the center. Now let's put one last dimension in. Let's go from the center of the circle to the outside edge. Let's put it here and this time I want you to type in 45 and press enter just to push your lens a little bit more into the centre of the camera. OK, let's make this 3D. Let's press Q on our keyboard. Now you see mine there didn't spin round so that I'm looking at it from a 3D point of view. So I'm going to press a home button and that spins it for me. It's always good to see what you're doing in 3D from this perspective. Select the circle and pull it out 10 millimetres. 
it's joining on, so all of this is the one thing now, and we press OK. And our little timeline down here, we've now got the lens, this is the extrude of the lens, and this is the sketch of the lens. If you've made a mistake, remember, you can right click and edit if you need to fix something. So we've got the basics of the camera done. <clears throat> the next stage is to put an angle on the back edge and to round the two front edges. So we're going to use a modify tool and it's called chamfer. Chamfer, if I just go back to it, I'll show you. It creates angled um, edges. So we're going to do this on the back of it. I'm going to orbit around and I'm going to select this edge here. I'm going to change this option to have two distances and I'm going to type into the first one 25 and I'm going to type into the second one 5. I'm going to press OK and it's angled that edge for me to create a slope, which is quite nice. I'm going to go back to Modify. I'm going to go to Fillet. Now, Fillet is a very commonly used tool and it's got a keyboard shortcut of F. So you could just press F on your keyboard. I'm going to select this edge here and I'm going to select this edge here. So it's here it says two edges selected and I'm going to type in five millimeters. I'm going to press OK. And again, if I orbit, you can see that I've rounded off the edges, which is looking quite cool. I'm going to press F for fillet again. And this time I'm going to select the back edges here, here, and here. And I'm going to put a smaller fillet on them now and press 2. I'm going to press OK. And now you can see, if I zoom in, I've rounded off, just taking the sharp edge off the back of the camera as well. So that's the first video done for you. If you've managed to get to this stage, very well done. The next video is going to be looking at adding on some extra features to make the camera look more realistic. We're going to add on the top piece and the button, and we're going to cut holes into the lens uh, to make it look a little bit more real. Before I finish though, I want you to save. So at the moment it says untitled. Just go to the save tool here and it's going to save into your folder which is already made for you called first project and type in camera. This is my first, uh, third camera that I'm making so I'm just going to type in camera three and I'm going to press save. If you want to ever find this, it's in here, camera three. As you can see, I've already got some copies that I've done already. To minimise this screen, just press X.